the Canadian Bitcoiners podcast is just two guys and maybe a guest or two discussing Bitcoin, Bitcoin equities, and the related macroeconomic space. It's not meant to be financial advice. So please, if you're doing any investing after listening to our program, do your own research, do your own due diligence, and understand that any money you invest can be lost. The show is meant for entertainment purposes only, and we hope you enjoy the program. Friends and enemies, welcome to uh, what's probably going to be the least watched episode of CBP of all time. My name is uh, Joey. That's Len. But you, you're looking at me confused. It's game seven tonight, Oilers and uh, Panthers. I think a lot of no, people... Are I'm gonna... well aware. I'm not going to watch it. In. I don't give a rat's ass, to be honest. But I'm sure to be throwing <laughs> rats over there in Florida. That's what they did back in 96. I wonder yeah. if that tradition still remains today. I, th- but... I think so. I think so. I don't know. There's no Joe Vanaski, no Niedermeyer, no Van Beesbrook. Uh, uh, uh. Those days are gone, buddy. Those no days are gone. Forbes yes. here in the chat. And I see a bunch of people on uh, Twitter and YouTube. That's great, man. I'm, I'm glad to see you guys. We got a good show all the same. We, we always uh, prepare a show regardless of whether the Stanley Cup playoffs are on or regardless of whether Italy stomps out Croatia with a late goal in a questionable amount of extra time in the Euros. But uh, maybe before we start, land the sponsors. Easy DNS, best place for you to host your content, buy a domain, transfer a domain. Mark is your friendly neighborhood registrar. You know, Len, we were talking to Mark on the weekend about um, was it on the weekend or during the week last week? I forget now about we're a website, today. a website that he that he was looking at the auction for. He was watching okay. the auction for this website. I think it was Bitcoin.tv. Maybe is that what it was? Yeah, I, I don't want to say being, much about. I'll tell you what, uh, it ended up going for a lot of money. So maybe if you are a um, you know watcher, an avid uh, payer of attention to the domain space and the price of the domain specifically, Mark can uh, be the guy from whom you buy a domain and then sell it later for six figures. Some, uh, you know what? Actually, we can see because I could tell you four days ago, it's reported Bitcoin.tv sold for $31,000 on June 20th at GoDaddy. Pretty good. That's a nice. So snipe, as per man. Google, yeah, that's a nice snipe. So anyway, Mark can uh, help you with that. He can help you with your virtual private server needs. So if you want to do a Nostra Relay Bitcoin Node BTC Pay Server Node list, that list is probably expanding every day, and I'm not really thinking about what other uh, things are on there. Plus, of course, PGP and GPG email, all the stuff you need to build a website and start doing something on your own, like we did. Mark and team can do it for you over at Easy DNS. Plus, of course, Len this day and age when uh, the content uh, game is overshadowed by censorship. Don't have to worry about that over with Mark. I know he doesn't always love when I say that, but it is true. So uh, go over easydns.com. CBP media is the code. Just tell Mark we sent you. You get half off your first round of buys with uh, Mark and team. You can't beat that man. 50% off. That ain't bad. Who else we got? Yeah, we got bull Bitcoin and you could use our URL. I want Bitcoin.ca. So that's not for sale. Of course. Thank you, Mark. (laughs) Yes. So a good time to buy the price of Bitcoin, it's not showing up on my block clock, but I'm not sure if it's still under 60000 but it's probably in that range. If you think that's cheap, good time to buy. Maybe you're a paper hand and you want to sell. But either way, Bull Bitcoin has you covered. You could do either or activity. You could sell on-chain. You could sell Lightning. You could buy on-chain. You could buy Lightning. When fees are high, good times to use Lightning. But fees aren't high right now. So my personal preference is still use on-chain. Not financial advice to your own research, but you can also do other things with bull Bitcoin. You could pay your bills. You know, if the price of Bitcoin's gone up quite a bit, maybe not many people are willing to part with their Bitcoin to pay their bills, but you have that option. So if you have like an electricity bill, you have to pay the car payment. You have to pay. You could use bull Bitcoin to facilitate the payment of those bills with your Bitcoin. And lastly, they have is you could use uh, their services to buy gift cards. So you could you want to go Starbucks, Home Depot, wherever the heck you want to go. You could pay with your Bitcoin. You could buy those and spend it in the real world. So you're kind of indirectly living on a Bitcoin standard. We have to slowly get there. We have to show that it's circular economy. This is one way to do it. So check that out, Bull Bitcoin. And if you haven't already opened an account, use our promo code below. And if you do that and fund your account and provide the necessary information, $21 will be added to your account. No questions asked. Can't beat that. They uh, also have the fee multiple tool, which um, probably coming in handy today. I think things are very low. Yeah, very low for the last year and very low for the last 30 days. So if you're thinking about making a transaction, doing some UTXO management, now is the time. And you can use that tool to uh, decide whether or not you should be doing it or just leaving your uh, stack as it is. So then uh, lots to talk about some housekeeping first, maybe. Who do we have on uh, Wednesday this week? 
Yeah, we have Wilson Mining, and it's an Iowa-based company, and they provide hosting services and also consulting services for companies that want to, or anybody that needs help with Bitcoin mining. And I know that's getting a little bit of steam these days, given the price of Bitcoin has gone up. So I'm going to talk to them about business, about hosting, and about Bitcoin mining in general, because there's lots that I'd like to talk about, and I think people would like to hear that as well. So yeah, Wilson Mining, be- Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Should be good. Um, next week, we have Carlo and Professor D. Domenico from uh, U of T who wrote a research paper recently on Bitcoin and uh, some personality traits of Bitcoiners, among other things. I don't know how much we're going to talk about that, but I do want to talk about the link between academia and Bitcoin and where uh, he thinks that whole realm can help Bitcoin adoption and maybe uh, some of the stuff that us as Bitcoiners can do a little better to help him. So I'm looking forward to that. I haven't talked to Carlo Campisi on the show in, I don't know how long, two years probably, maybe longer than that, since ShakePay was a sponsor, basically. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking to him. I always like Carlo. He's uh, been a friend of the show and a friend of mine as well. So that's an interesting couple of weeks coming up here. Um, where do you want to go next? Boost? You got a couple of boosts there? Yeah, let's do. We've got four of them in particular I want to rhyme off. E. Washent. Interesting name. 100 Sats. He says, love the show and appreciate all the great interviews. And can say, you guys got me into the nerd miner and running my own node. It feels great to be part of a new revolution. Very cool. Very we'll be cool. talking about the mining in this show, uh, especially home mining and some interesting ways to do it. So, yeah. Uh, nerd miner is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Maybe not the most efficient way of doing it, but certainly one way to do it cheaply. Just dip your toes in the water. So, yeah. A wartime boosts 333 sats, a heart, and two beer mugs. <laughs> what do we do? Hit him with one of these? Alone? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, a heart and two beer mugs. Thank you so much for the boost. We'll be donating these very soon, in fact. We'll figure out who it is we want to donate to. Cashing out of fiat, 1,000 sats. He says 500 sats for the show and all the babies it produces. Long time <laughs> listener slash cheap ass tipper. I'm going to try it better though. Thanks for the great content. So, yeah, I guess 500 for each of our two little ones, I'm guessing. Right. Sure. That's, no, <laughs> we'll take it. I'll donate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> we um, appreciate it. Yeah. And then to worthy cause. And last but not least, we have Checkpoint Jeff 5000 Sats. He says, Great work, guys. I'm from central Alberta. Walk us through the Canadian tax law when selling goods for BTC. You know what? When you're selling something for Bitcoin, to the best of my knowledge, there's nothing you have to report aside from the fact that you have purchased it. It's a selling is a taxable event. This is from what I understand. So exchanging Bitcoin to anything else not named Bitcoin, that is a taxable event. And we talked about this at length, and I'm not going to go into that right now. But for selling something for Bitcoin, I don't think there's any tax implications surrounding that. It's just like you're selling it for gold. You're selling it for. I think you still have to pay though. Oil. Like you probably still have to pay. Like I'm just thinking of you know. There's a we, sales tax you have to pay. There's yeah, everything exactly. that's got to be applied yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah, but in terms yeah. of like when you get the Bitcoin, it's just it's it's no, like a, it. Yeah, that's it. You're right. Yeah. So uh, there's nothing. But remember, when you do that, I don't think you're going to huddle forever. The selling time or exchanging Bitcoin and anything else not named Bitcoin. That's going to be the complicated part, especially if you're a business. You have then this on record, and you don't want to screw around with CRA. Make sure you provide all the information: how much it is you bought it for, how much it is you sold it for, the time you bought, date you you bought, and the same thing for selling. Also, you get fifty percent of that is going to be capital gains tax. So, too bad, so sad. That's what it is in Canada right now until the laws change. So, hodl, don't sell. My yeah. opinion. Yeah, just hang on to it. I think the business thing too, you got to have your um, your cost basis. You know, it's going to be hard to calculate that if you're constantly taking Bitcoin. I don't know what you would do. There's tons of like, not you know, not quite yet gap options. Gap like generally accepted accounting practices. You know, what would you do? You take maybe the the opening day price, the closing day price, and divide it by two. Is that what you do? Take the average for your cost basis on days where you accepted Bitcoin? I really don't know. It's hard because the, the price moves so fast. You know, like it's 7% lower now than it was a few hours ago. 
So where do you, I don't know. It's, it's almost, I don't want to say it's not worth it because it's an important part of the whole Bitcoin thing, but it's difficult unless you have the tools and the commitment to make sure that you're recording stuff accurately and doing your bookkeeping in a way that, uh, like Len said, is not going to upset the CRA. Unfortunately, we're in a world where really not upsetting the CRA is like, you know, goal one, A, B, and C when you're running a business. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want to run afoul of the boys over there at the three letter. Yeah. Don't let them, don't give them any opportunity to open up the doors and yeah. give you an audit because once exactly. it happens, it's going to happen time and time again. I don't think it's a pretty, pretty picture either way. That's it for the boost. I'm not sure if anything else you want to chop off. Do we have, do we have any other housekeeping stuff? I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think so. I'm undecided about whether or not we're going to do something Thursday for the debate. Uh, I, I am in the background talking to my American colleagues about maybe doing like half an hour at the end of the debate. I know it's going to be late. I know um, I don't stay up that late most of the time. I'll be on the same cocktail that Biden is on that night, trying to stay up past uh, nine o'clock if we do it. But if you're interested in something like that, maybe even just a Twitter space or something, like maybe I won't take it to YouTube. I think a lot of people want to do the Twitter space thing anyway. Let me know. Shoot, shoot me a text. Give me some suggestions for guests. I've been trying to coax SB into it. I think he might do it. Uh, maybe Wayfaring as well, who's our other American friend. I don't know. They'll see what Brandon's doing. There's there's options anyway. I wouldn't mind doing it if there's a big debate. And maybe um, are we we're going to talk about uh, a lot of stuff when it, when it comes to like people now getting into Bitcoin. But you know the Trump Trump on All In last week. You know I, I saw that it's on the website. You noted that uh, he did the All In podcast last week. Didn't talk about Bitcoin. Do you want to start with that kind of stuff? Where do you want to start? Well, we could talk about that initially, but I'm just going to just double back to where you're talking about the debate. I didn't even know that the time. Apparently, 9 p.m. Eastern is when it starts. What? Not, 9, 9 p.m.? Yeah, and it it's 90 minutes. Ugh, so it's going to wrap up then 10.30-ish <laughs> p.m. Eastern. So, that's yeah, too, there you go. Too late. Forget it. Forget everything <laughs> I just said. If I show up for a space after that, you'll be lucky. But, you know, I, I thought it would start at like 8, a reasonable time. Nine o'clock. So are you telling me the Democratic Party wanted debates with no audience that start at 9 p.m. on a weeknight? Like they really don't want anyone to watch, do they? Is that the plan? Like well, no one watching? No, think of who you're capturing then. Because nine o'clock, you're still capturing the people on the East Coast that are, you know, the sun is starting to set. So you could probably watch half an hour, an hour, maybe longer. But on the West Coast, starting at six, you know, if you go any earlier, then it's going to be much harder to pick up the debate. So it's difficult to capture both sides. But remember, there's a three-hour difference between the East and the West Coast. Yeah. When I think about Hawaii. <laughs> Neither are they. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, how many, not a factor. How many, how many seats? How They're going to go to Singapore dollars soon over the way things are going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there, anyway, whatever. Let's get into it. Well, you want to talk about Trump and all in? I like. I, I, mean, I have did really. You, did, did you let's do it? I would assume no. You didn't. No, okay. no, I zero interest. And then the only thing I, I understood, and this is all secondhand information, so I can't verify this, is he didn't talk about Bitcoin, nor did no. they ask him anything about Bitcoin. They did ask means, him. They they led with crypto and Bitcoin. They led with a the question, question, or was it like a topic on it? Like to, it was, it was a again. question that had a part about crypto and Bitcoin. Trump didn't touch it, which to me doesn't really matter. Um, that podcast is not meant to capture the crypto and Bitcoin crowd. And I think he knew that going in. It sounded like he was prepared to talk about a lot of things that are important to people who listen to that podcast, like the deficit, immigration, um, things like that. So I thought he did an okay job. You know, All In is a weird show for me. Some Sometimes I really like it and sometimes I really hate it. And I hate to say it, but it really hinges on how much of a dickhead Calcanis is being that day. If he's if he's completely insufferable, cutting people off, pretending to you know quote unquote offer context while really just spout spouting out lefty talking points, it's unlistenable. But when he's not, and when he's an honest dealer and a square dealer, and does his best to facilitate conversation with three guys who are you know by his own admission smarter and more successful than he is, I think it's a really good show because they're friends, Len, and they speak candidly. You know, it'd, it'd be like there, if there was another one of me and another one of you sitting in the room just, you know, kind of bullshitting back and forth about what's going on in the economy and the country and business and finance and tech, you know, things that even if we're not experts, we have some, um, some visibility on thanks to the things we are experts in. And I thought they, they did a good job with Trump because they asked him some difficult questions, stuff that they said they were going to ask. 
And I think that Trump gave some answers they liked, some they didn't like, some they challenged him on, some they expanded on. They got some new stuff out of him about um, immigration policy. They got some new stuff out of him about tariffs and taxes. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, I tweeted this last week, so I'll, I'll, I, it bears repeating though, given that the debates are coming up on Thursday. You're living in, in a country, if you're an American, where both candidates are, let's say, about 80 years old, okay? One of them is clearly not all there at this point. There's nothing wrong with not being all there at 80. Not many people are all there at 80 anymore. It's difficult to be all there at 80, especially after the life that Biden's led. One of them is a guy who, you know, may be a little more coherent and keeps a much, much, much more jam-packed schedule and shows uh, almost no fatigue, it seems like, when he's at these public events. The thing is that neither of them are really quality candidates on the issues, I think, overall. They're okay, this, they're, but you're going to run into a lot of the same problems regardless of who you choose as a leader over in the United States. The thing that I would say is I think that both candidates should skip the debates, honestly. I think that both candidates should do All In, Joe Rogan, and Pod Save America, the three big podcasts. Pod Save America is super left-leaning. Rogan's neither left nor right, doesn't much care about politics at all. And All In, I think, skews left more than right uh, on a lot of issues, right, right some issues, but uh, I think is a sort of a left, center-left podcast, let's say. That's really where you want to see your candidate try and hold their own for an hour, an hour and a half in a free flowing conversation where it's not, you know, your fan club tapper and whoever else is moderating on Thursday. And the same goes for Trump on Fox. You know, it's not his fan club moderating the debate. The, the podcast that I mentioned probably get, I don't know how many views in, the, in a month, a hundred million, something like that between the three of them, maybe more. And I would say that like, if you wanted to really show your, um, show your, voter base that you can perform uh, in an adversarial environment, which is important when you're the president of the United States. It's important when you're the president of a high school student council, you know, let alone the president of the United States. Uh, this is the way to do it. The debates, I think, are a washed kind of format, Len. And I'm going to go as far as, as to say that this will be the last cycle where debates are held on the three big networks. You're never going to see it again after this year. I think, I think that time is done. That ship has sailed and no one really cares. They want to see more stuff like you're seeing uh, from All In on Friday. Even if you don't like the candidate, the fact of the matter is he did it. And the other piece of that is that there's just no way Biden could ever do it. There's no way he could ever do it. That 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 version of Joe Biden could never go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those four guys for an hour and change. He just doesn't have it in him. And it sucks, but uh, that's you know sort of where we are right now, the state of politics in the United States. The good news is RFK Jr. is going to do exactly what you're saying. He's, he's already done it. He did He did all in a couple of times. Yeah, he's, he's not going to participate in the debates. So he's not going to be on any of the major networks. He's going to do yep. exactly what you're saying. So he's yep. going to be... And whatever is the result of that will happen. I don't think it's going to impact his ability to get elected. But just it's, just, it's funny because he's being excluded from that inner circle. <laughs> Absolutely and, crazy. Boomer, good yeah. comment in the chat. Why don't we get the candidates doing CBP, high hash rate, and rock, paper, Bitcoin? Maybe we should. <laughs> Maybe we should. Is that possible? Has anyone talked to you or reached out? I haven't heard from any of the candidates. So. No, nobody's going to talk to me. Maybe we can get one of the Canadian guys to do it or gals to do it <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, let's move on. There's... Not after that, probably. <laughs> well, we'll talk about Bitmain. Um, Bitmain, I'm not sure if you heard, but they just released some equipment that makes Bitcoin mining more efficient. And we're talking now the S21 XP model, and this was released to the world at the World Digital Mining Summit in Las Vegas. Why we didn't go, I have no idea. We should have went. At least yeah. one of us should have. Either yeah. way, maybe next year. So this comes only two months after they released the S21 Pro. And the S21, the non-Pro, has a hash rate of 200 terahash and a power consumption of the of 17.5 joules per uh, terahash. So, so that's not too bad. 17.5 is pretty darn efficient. The Pro, in comparison, it is 15 out of the box, 15 joules per terahash, and 234 terahash. That's how much it's hashing away, which is pretty good. That's just the air-cooled. If you want to get the uh, more efficient one, you could get even a hydro, which is up to 473 terahash per that's second. That's nuts. How big are these things? You see, how, like, how big are these units? They're 
so the, the regular air cooled is slightly bigger from the pictures I I've seen than the mm-hmm. S19. The hydro, it's an all encompassing unit that has a water cooling and everything. Those are humongous machines. So they're not simply you just take your existing equipment off the shelf and plug these in. Uh, they're just huge. And there's also the the immersion, which will get you 380 terahash too. And um, that's pretty darn good. So there you go. So just mining got a heck of a lot more or marginally more efficient. We're talking 15% more hash rate now and 11% more efficient compared to the previous model. So a lot of R&D went to this, right? Like these models, they just don't pop off the shelf and it just doesn't come from somebody's head. A lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money is put into this to get to this point. This is why Bitmain is a leader in this field and the competition generally is chasing them. But this comes with a but. We'll talk about that in a bit. But just wanted to point this out there. There's a new model that came out. Anybody that wants to get it, I'm not sure anybody wants to get one of these. (laughs) But these new S21 XPs, they're out there, and they are screamers. But, man, they're freaking loud, too. I don't think you're just going to want to have this (laughs) heating your home. It's got to be something like in a garage or somewhere else. It's just away from the house, just how loud these things are. Yeah, I think that's true. I was listening to um, a bit of the HUD-8 <clears throat> uh, call today on so Twitter. They, some news happened from HUD-8 today, right? They, yeah, they're, a... they're going into AI like everyone else. They're, oh, that's what it is? They're going into uh, AI. They actually have, there's a link with CoreWeave there, who we've talked about on the show, who has a link with NVIDIA. The NVIDIA CoreWeave thing, I don't know. SP is a big uh, NVIDIA bull too. I should ask them about that last week because I'm curious about some of the things there. Like NVIDIA is giving loans to core weave and core weave is buying nvidia gpus like i don't know it seems a bit weird to me but anyway um the the uh hud 8 call the reason i bring it up is because someone asked on the call about these new bitmain machines and uh you know what are you guys going to do as far as hardware blah 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 and uh asher i think the guy's name is the new ceo took over for jamie had i think without any hesitation an answer that was not anything I was expecting, that they're not going to buy the new machines. He said the reason they waited to procure hardware was not to buy the new ones, but rather to get the old ones cheaper. So, you know, you mentioned it when you were giving your summary there that, you know, it's really not that long between production models now. And so I think a lot of miners are probably thinking the same thing, that maybe this is a game of sort of quantity over quality at some level. Once you get to the sort of two or three top end models from Bitmain, Probably the same for the other manufacturers too. If we can get more of the old ones online and our PPAs are rock solid, we're getting you know lower than uh, lower than market uh, power uh, pricing. Is that the move now? That these guys are going to try and pull off, given that given that they're also doing high efficiency compute, right? You know, do they care about having the best Bitcoin miners anymore? Maybe they don't. Is that part of it? Like I. I I didn't think about this with SB, but isn't that part of the whole shift in business model now? Feels like it might be. You know, well, I don't want to have to buy the newest stuff. It's hard to get. The logistics are difficult. So instead, I move my company to some level of uh, HPC as opposed to just Bitcoin mining. I buy one generation or two generation older units. Efficiencies are close enough that it doesn't make that big difference if I can get enough of them. And I'm not putting too much money into Bitcoin mining when HPC is going to take up part of the business anyway. I think. Do I have that right? You know more than me, but in my head, that's how it might look. I, Hot 8 is they're interesting because they were mining Ethereum before it went yeah. to proof of stake. So they, they had equipment at that time, GPUs to, specially designed to, or either way, general purpose GPUs to mine Ethereum. After that, move to proof of stake what do they do with that equipment are they still sitting on it maybe now they're just figuring out hey there's it's a year and a half old now right it's, it's, it's yeah it is older is there still value in that i don't know i i honestly don't know so i've been saying i'm not sure certainly behind the scenes that i'm thinking that these companies are gonna to change like a pure bitcoin mining company is probably at least publicly traded it's probably just gonna not be available they're gonna to have to somehow pivot and, and to have something else in there i can't believe corby's getting involved they're they they're like seeming, seemingly getting involved in just about any oh, they're popping industry. up a lot of places yeah they're popping yeah. up a lot of places and the, again this, i need to know the relationship between corby and nvidia i need to look into that in more detail but it's 
there's something going on between the two of them that I think is a bit not not unsettling, but it's not something you see often where like NVIDIA, like I said, is giving it's either like debt converts or something else to Core Weave. And Core Weave isn't using that money to buy NVIDIA product. How does that make sense? You know, I, 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 again, I got to find out, but um, something going on there. I'm just looking here at uh, what it takes to run. Like when I when I think about high power compute, I think about stuff for uh, basically corporate LLMs. Yeah, these are cr- like crazy, crazy big. Um, but I don't Does see a run price Doom? on these. Yeah, you could probably run Doom on the fucking LCD screen on the front of the thing. I don't know how big these GPUs are, nor do I know how much they cost. It doesn't say much. Let's see. How much does an NVIDIA H100 cost? Cost. Uh, dun, 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 dun. H100, 35,000-ish. Whoa. So, yeah, 35,000. What's the ROI of that? <laughs> yeah, it's, well, that's the thing. If these miners are serious about doing high-power compute, this is the stuff you need to do it. So like again, like I'm having a hard time understanding what exactly, like you said, the ROI is on a lot of these things for them, as opposed to Bitcoin mining. And SB and I talked about that last week. We didn't really come up with a good answer either. But there's a lot of moving parts in there that people should be aware of, especially if you're investing in miners, right? A lot of people who buy Bitcoin, especially in Canada, like to invest in miners. And uh, I don't know, like where, like where do you, where do you come down on this now? You know, do you think? And like I said to SP, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts because you weren't on that show. If you wanted exposure to Bitcoin mining before, it was really a pure Bitcoin mining play. Now, as exposure to Bitcoin mining, you're looking at stuff that's actually just more about power purchase agreements and being able to deploy and redeploy your computing power to whatever the best use of the power ends up being. It's basically just power allocation now. And so if you're going to do that anyway... And no matter what the use is, they're going to use NVIDIA chips. Why would you ever buy HUT over NVIDIA? Isn't that the question these miners should be asking themselves? If you really want to drive your share price, but you're doing stuff that relies on NVIDIA regardless, and you can take away the execution risk uh, by just buying the chip provider, why would any ever, anybody ever buy HUT8 or Bitfarms or so, Cathedra or any of these companies who are doing both? Just buy the chip manufacturer and so let these guys figure out the rest. Go go even further then. If you want to get exposure to Bitcoin, why would you even get these Bitcoin mining companies? Because like you mentioned, there comes a lot of risk that is yeah. involved with that. Why yeah. not just buy the asset itself? You're, I think you know, I think you're right. I mean, I don't buy miners. You don't buy miners. So I buy Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't get uh, this is why I don't understand though. I think there's I, I I still think though, like speaking for for the population, some of whom watch the show, like I still get messages from people about miners from time to time. The there's still a group of people who people who don't want to have the ETF in their TFSA. They prefer to buy equity in one of the miners. My question now, like I said, is why would you do that instead of buying NVIDIA? Like it's to me, you're adding a layer of risk. I know you're shaking your head. I'm, I'm not really sure, honestly. Yeah. I, I need someone. We, we, we have Bitfarms coming on in what, three weeks or something like that? Something like that. The only I, thing I'm gonna, you can say is that they're undervalued. Somehow you could come up with an argument they're undervalued. Oh, we're going to see. I I'm going how... to push the Bitfarms guys as hard as I can because I, you know, I don't, I don't understand why. I mean, Bitfarms is not doing HPC, I don't think. Are they? Are they doing high power compute? They're not. So, the like, best of my knowledge, strictly Bitcoin mining. Okay. So, le- I'm going to ask them why, what my, like, why this thesis is wrong. And uh, they'll probably have an answer because they're not doing it right. So, maybe they agree that it's, you're, you know, giving yourself a hard time on the share price. It's interesting all the same because a year ago, Len, neither of us would have said that Bitcoin miners would be getting into AI. And now, you know, it seems like people, else. well, it's weird, but like even Iris Energy, like if you looked at Iron's share price on days where Bitcoin's been flat, Iron's up like a hundred fucking percent since Bitcoin's been choppy or down. And, you know, they, they were one of the first to do this HPC stuff. And I think people in the market like this, but I don't, but when you ask them, you know, when, and SB's an Iron Bull too. And, I, you know, I'm not saying that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's way brighter than I am when it comes to this stuff. I, when you ask people who are like bullish on miners, they just don't have an answer for why would you buy the miners over NVIDIA today? It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why you would do it. And I want to know what Biff Farms is looking at and what they think and why they didn't do this, given that the market seems to like it. Maybe they think the same way, maybe they don't. But it's, again, a year ago, never would have said this. 
is it good that this is happening? Maybe. I see guys like Mike Alfred saying, oh, Bitcoin and AI converging. This is the best investing opportunity in 25 years. You know, Marty Bent, same thing, Bitcoin and AI. You know, I don't really give a shit. And I think the people who use AI, you know, the sort of retail facing AI stuff will tell you that it sucks. You know, like you can't get the AI to write a decent article for you. I tried to use AI to like summarize stuff. It doesn't do a good job. I can do a better job. I even think about like Access of Easy, okay, the other show we do. Once in a while, especially when we first started, I would feed the page to like ChatGPT and tell it to write me a summary of things that I should be paying attention to in cybersecurity because I just didn't know. And it never did a good job. It never did a good job of giving me a summary. I always thought, you know, my opinion, of course, that I did a better job than GPT did. Mark seems to agree. I mean, he still got us doing the show. And so when I look at that, you know, from a Bitcoin standpoint, or even when I use it for work, it never does a great job of doing the stuff that everyone seems to love. Is this a problem with like broader competency of people? They don't know what a good summary looks like. They don't know how to, you know, read and review something for key points and write them down in a way that makes it easy to disseminate later on. Maybe. I think that's something we could talk about over the course of another two hours, but I don't know, man, like you, and you know, I know you feel this way. What's, what are your sort of, you know, um, your issues with Bitcoin miners going to AI? I don't have any particular issues with that. They have to find some other ways to generate revenue, especially when the price of Bitcoin goes down, which impacts their ability, their revenue if they're strictly Bitcoin miner. So if they could parlay that energy into something else that is product that is sorry, very profitable, as a business, all the more power to them. The problem I have, though, is this something that's going to still be profitable in six months, a year, and two years, two years from now? Is, is there going to be an overextension of companies getting into this, which creates a glut yeah. of services like this and then drives down the price? This could potentially happen. And then, then these companies that are leveraging themselves to get into the AI side of things, they're going to get wrecked as a result. I don't. I, I look at this, I, and I've said it many times about... Bitcoin mining is going to eventually transition to those that just have extra energy that you're just not monetizing it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the perfect scenario to start employing Bitcoin mining is it doesn't require that much overhead in terms of, you know, you don't have to have a fancy location. You can have just a fucking trailer you wheel out there. And if, as long as you have connection to the internet, you know, it's, I don't think it's that hard these days, especially with Starlink or shit like that you're you're good to go you you have the ability to start up something and yeah. monetize that energy that was previously not monetized that's where it's at so all these like when you're flaring off or just venting methane man oh man that that's wasted revenue somehow that they got to capture that that's yeah, yeah i think you're right i don't i don't know i, I think we we're gonna or even like uh, it's, it's just it didn't mean to drop but even if you have a power plant is just, you know, you're generating more electricity than you need. So, for example, you set up a hydro plant like they're doing in Ethiopia, and there's more mm -hmm. electricity that than there's there's demand for. What do you do? Well, balance it out with Bitcoin. I miner. think you're right. No, I think you're right. Don't get me wrong. I actually believe I, I believe the way you're saying is correct for sure. I, I you know I don't know how long, as an industry, you know how long is Bitcoin mining around for? Five years, six years? I don't know. Like. I'm just not sure. Oh my God, Boomer. Julian Assange to be freed after agreeing to a plea deal. What? Is that true? Boomer's account hacked? We got to find this out. Is, gonna... But how did they... Uh, oh, you know what? I don't want to speculate right we now. Can't. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We just did yeah. 35 minutes on what was supposed well, to be a Bitmain story. Let's still talk about Bitmain because it, you know they're, they are a leader in the world of Bitcoin mining. And this is... in my eyes a negative when it comes to this because you have this one company that has a good chunk of the overall market for bitcoin miner and if you look at it it's it, well there's some news that came out for example uh, this past march 2024 mm -hmm. bitmain released some new firmware for their equipment and that firmware restricted the installation of third party firmwares so this impacted stuff like Brains OS, Lux OS, Lux OS, sorry, and others. So anyone that wanted to fine tune their hardware, uh, that or even get additional settings which are not available in the stock, well, your SOL. So it's advised to not upgrade the firmware to the March 2024 or later because you, you might be locked out. Although it sounds like Lux may have found a way to get around this, but I'm unable to confirm this or deny it. So <laughs> either way, 
Bitmain has every right to do this, right? Like they, they're the ones producing the equipment. They're the ones, but it makes them look bad in a way to restrict the hardware in this manner. And, you know, we need more choices when it comes to ASICs that this to have a desirable outcome in this, we definitely need it. And so you look at those that could potentially do it. We had Intel, which was a great option because, you know, they had deeper ties to Western nations like Canada, United States, and so forth. But man, if they didn't want to do it, think of, you know, with all the resources they had, the people, the fabrication, all that shit. And they found this wasn't, I guess, to be a, a profitable endeavor. That goes to show you that this is a very difficult industry to break in because Intel has the resources that only companies would dream to have. Who the heck is now going to want to come in and compete against Bitmain? Yeah, man, like I, I can't see this changing in the next while. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't like the fact that Bitmain is the major supplier of equipment out there. I, that's a, that's a to me that that rubs me the wrong way. Bitmain is the attack vector we should be concerned about. I think. You know, is that fair to say? I'm with you. I, I'm yeah. 100% with you. I'm looking at this. I'm like, man, this is not decentralized. We got to do something. And I don't know how to do something because obviously this is way outside my control. We all have I, to buy the bid axe. Everyone needs to buy two bid axes off John. But those the are bit made central. Equipment. They're no. using chips. You got to figure it out. He's got to figure it out. Someone's got to figure this out. Can't be me and so, you. I don't know anything about miners. <laughs> so. some, some things are open source, but they're ripping out chips from S19s and S21s yeah. to make those happen. So still, we're back to the source. We're back to Bitmain. And I don't know, man. I, I, somebody, I, I wish somebody could get involved in it. Uh, Intel, that was it. That, that was going to be the one that could really create a way. Intel's, Intel is like, you know, underachieving on so many different fronts these days. And the Bitcoin mining thing is not really that surprising to me. They, they couldn't figure that out. So what do we do? Like, you know, how do we how do we fix it? I see, you know, Nate in the chat saying uh, pleb miners will rise. We said that in the show too. I think there's like a there's a real possibility that it becomes a necessity for Bitcoin over the next 10 years that everyone runs a miner at a loss um, to protect the network, you know? And I I don't know what that means for Bitcoin security and Bitcoin propagation. I'll tell you what, Len, it's probably not great for it. No. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I think there's there's at least some possibility that, um, you know, I don't know. We wind up with uh, we wind up with a situation where Bitmain is the, the, you know, party that gets compromised. We talked before about this, and I think you kind of poo-pooed me, rightfully so. You know, listening back to that episode, I, I didn't do a good job defending my position. But maybe the industrial miners, you know, shifting or forking to another algo uh, that works better for both HPC and Bitcoin mining isn't the danger. Maybe it's Bitmain that's actually the yeah. danger when it comes what, to forking the, stuff. The yeah. first thing you're describing, is if my node doesn't agree with whatever... Yeah, it, then it doesn't matter ultimately, right? It really yeah. doesn't matter. But yeah, the, the, the Bitmain thing, not to say that they're, the something is imminent or whatever. It's just, let's be honest. Why would we want one company to have this much of a market share no we don't and we don't now they're restricting the um installation of aftermarket firmware you know and they're I, the lob laws of bitcoin mining yeah in a way they are let's <laughs> let's get the drug meat on this maybe sure could, uh, yeah get them in tag well, them in <laughs> so you, you talked about the bit axe let's talk about this because somebody posted a very interesting project on twitter and his name is off grid love that name and he's using or he used the bit Axe Supra. That's the one that has the hash rate of 580 gigahash per second to 700 gigahash per second. So it's really much less than an S9, but still it's very efficient. Either way, he was mining with that on Brains Pool and using to power this uh, a solar panel, a 100 mm -hmm. watt solar panel. And through this, in a month, he mined a grand total of 1813 sats that's about a dollar and 16 so this guy's located in canada this time of year we get a lot of sunshine so if you look at this it will take years if ever to break even still a cool project but if anybody that wants to do something like this and you think yeah you're gonna make bank this guy only made 1800 sats in a month and that's in the sunniest time of the year in canada so 
yeah, it's it's really not very profitable. Nonetheless, a cool project, and I I don't want to, to shit on that. But for anybody out there that thinks yeah, I'm gonna to make it big, especially with solar, not gonna happen, man. It is not gonna make much. <laughs> I think still it's kind of cool though. I always like yeah. I like, I like stories like this. It's it's like not often anymore that we talk about home miners innovating, right? Um, you know what. What can you say? There's there's a part of me that says that you should mine no matter what the cost is. If it's a little less than you know the Bitcoin you would get for the same amount of power, it's actually a lot less these days probably. But um, there's something noble about mining. And I still think that. I just don't know whether I, I should be able to ask regular Bitcoiners, you know, can you mine at, at you know, whatever your power cost is for sats that you would otherwise be able to buy even non KYC probably for cheaper than the power. You know, it's, it's a difficult thing to ask people to do. We talk a lot in Bitcoin about game theory and incentives and you're just not incentivized to do it. You know, neat story, neat idea, but um, we need, we need to figure out how to make home mining um, an option. I know you're laughing because you can't even do it. Like there's no, yeah. there's no way to do it. Right. And the, the problem too, is that there will be a gap between when home mining becomes necessary and when home mining becomes, you know, profitable, if those things happen and man, that, that crossover period is going to be brutal for network security. And so, I, 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 I don't know. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I was going to say in Ontario, there's an option you could take advantage of. I think it's called the ultra low energy thing where, yes, you know, we have a tiered system right now. Like in my house, we have three tiers. We have a uh, high mid and low. There's mm -hmm. another one. that's like ultra low. So you're, high is going to be much higher in terms of the cost but your low is very very cheap so that's the one because it's overnight and so you'd have to time it you'd have to, to uh, ramp up your miner during that ultra low and then turn it off at the when it gets a little higher in terms of cost but you're only going to be mining for i don't know what the hours would be six seven eight hours every day yeah when is the low period is i think it starts at 7 p.m but i don't know when it finishes in the morning 7 a.m seven maybe? seven yeah, for, okay. that's for the low but for right. ultra low is different it's even mm. they, they change it so they're really trying to encourage people to charge your cars and shit overnight but that's so that's the situation you'd have to do but you're only going to be taking advantage of the power for maybe a third of the day so unless you could score some s19 for cheap or free <laughs> Then it, it, if you're paying for it outright, like the regular market rate, you're never gonna be able to make it up. So there's yeah. no way to do it. Yeah, that's what, tough that's ask. Too bad. Tough ask. Yeah, too. But bad like all these things, like he heats his home with, uh, well, with an ASIC, and he doesn't give a fuck, and he's, he's right. And if you're gonna heat your home with electricity, you might as well plug in one of these pieces of equipment. Get something KYC free Sats at the same time. Yeah, I like this boomer comment. Take your bid axe to the office, the gym, the hotel. And then tell your wife to take it to her boyfriend's house. <laughs> oh, the, the last one. Yeah. The other one's I Your membership's going to get revoked and you're going to get kicked out of the. Buddy, I see Zoomers plugging in all kinds of shit in the gym now. I saw a kid charging his vape in there like a week ago. He's got it plugged in. Awesome. I know. I know. He's got it plugged in near the uh, squat rack. That made me laugh. Good for him, man. Power's not, you know, nothing's cheap, Len. That guy's in the. He's an entrepreneurial economizer, that guy, you know? He's he's getting it in. He's taking care of business. Good for him. Meta Planet's also taking care of business. They they plan to buy more Bitcoin. And this one is going to be 6.2 million-ish worth of Bitcoin. And they're going to be doing this using the proceeds from an upcoming bond is issuance. And this is a big buy for them. They already have $9 million of Bitcoin. So they're going to buy another six with one particular purchase, which is pretty darn big. So this bond issuance, if anybody's interested and wants to get in on, on this, it's going to take place this Wednesday. So Japanese time. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's going to have an annual interest rate of 0.5% and will mature on June 25th, 2025. So the question is, how did the market react to this news that Meta Planet is going to buy some Bitcoin? Well, it went up 12%. <laughs> 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 so how many times we get this where you know uh oh, bitcoin the market loves it going up you know so uh, anyways i you know i'm gonna say that i said this is the company to not commit to memory but every fucking week they buy more bitcoin <laughs> every fucking week good for them 
I like it, man. Uh, they, hey, listen, they're committed to the strategy. And I think even if they're not committed to it for the reasons that you and I might think, uh, it doesn't matter because like I said before, and you said this as well, the reason that those strategies work and are uh, effective is because they eventually win people over, right? They win over shareholders and the company likes it more before you know what the price is going up, blah, blah, blah. Not today, obviously, but you get the idea. So yeah, I think it's I think it's dope, man. This is fantastic. I, I look forward to seeing them continue to buy. They got to be, as far as publicly traded companies, I know they're small, but they got to be in the top 20 probably, right? As far as like Bitcoin holders at this point. I don't even have a clue. What's that website? The Bitcoin Treasuries or something like that? And yeah, we got to check with MVK here. Bitcoin Treasuries. How come the CBP isn't listed on there? We bought more Bitcoin today, by the way. He doesn't like us. He doesn't. MVK, we refuse. I, what, 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 what does he want to do? What do we need? We got to bring in KPMG to do the audit? I'm telling well, you, know, you, we got. Come on, man. We have this proudly on display to Block Clock. I talk fondly of the cold card. Come on, man. What are we so, even yeah, doing? Get us on there. Come on, so, man. What's, what's the, the story? Let's see. Meta Planet. Jesus Christ. Bitcoin Meta. Treasuries. Meta Planet. Uh, no, they're way down. There's a lot more companies here than I thought, to be honest with you. A lot of them are miners, but still. Um, but still, yeah. That's just, yeah. It goes to show you that a lot of companies are holding MicroStrategy still in the lead by quite a bit. Yeah. They got, no, they got quite a bit. They got quite a bit. They, uh, Meta Planet now holding 141 Bitcoin uh, as far as last update. I'm not sure exactly when this was last updated, but. There you go. That's but 141. They're top 50. <laughs> They're top 50 for sure. I don't know how many. There's a lot of uh, place underneath them. But even like you don't realize how many of these guys, like how many coins these guys have. Uh, Sandler's got 828 Bitcoin. That's quite a bit. Uh, who else is on here that I'm surprised to see? It, well, DeFi called, Technologies? Is it, are there DeFi? Listed? Let's see. Let's see. DeFi was a pretty small buy, right? Uh, yeah, but still I'm wondering if it's going to make the list there. No, it's they're not there. No. Oh, so they're getting the CBP treatment. Yeah. Sorry about that. How many to get on the list of Bitcoin treasuries? It looks like we have to break forty-two Bitcoin. Got a long way to go. We well, need you, we're we, gonna we're gonna need you guys to buy a lot of Bitcoin before we have enough runoff what? residuals to get to forty-two Bitcoin. No, or we could start issuing bonds. <laughs> right, if these guys can start issuing bonds at zero point five, we'll issue bonds at zero percent. So you're Let's gonna get zero fucking gain out of this. In fact, you're gonna lose because you know the dollar is gonna be worth less in a year. We'll send you a T-shirt. That's still too much. <laughs> we'll, we'll do. <laughs> we'll do a call through Zoom or something. And just yeah. Chill. Whatever. Yeah. Like, I'll send whatever. You guys pictures of my disgusting feet after football. <laughs> is that something people want to see man like, i don't know i don't know anyways let's talk about michael dell really quick and he, this guy may be orange pilled not sure because it's through a recent twitter conversation or x conversation between he and michael saylor and dell was writing on x that bitcoin is digital scarcity yeah so what does this all mean like this is the guy behind the dell technologies company and this company is worth far, far more than MicroStrategy is. So are they signaling that they are going to be buying Bitcoin? Or is he signaling that he's going to be buying Bitcoin? A lot of it, we have no clue. Whatever it is that happened, it wasn't enough to turn the market today for a gain. Like it went very, very red. So maybe he bought at the wrong time. Either way, it looks like there's going to be a lot of people out there that have money, billionaires per se, that are going to want to park some of it into Bitcoin. So we talked about there's going to be a supply shock eventually when there's no more exchange, no more Bitcoin in the exchanges. Like, you know, these companies buying, billionaires buying, eventually it's going to come to a point where there's nothing left. And what happens then? Who are they going to buy from and at what price? But anyways, is Dell in on Bitcoin? I don't fucking have a clue, but it's raised a lot of interest in the Bitcoin world. How much do you care? To be honest, zero, but some people do. I yeah. don't care enough. It, it, like I said about last week, it does not change my buying habits. It doesn't increase how much Bitcoin I'm going to buy. It doesn't in decrease the amount of Bitcoin I'm going to buy. For me, my conviction remains the exact same it was before we heard anything from Dell. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm the same way. I mean, what's Dell been up to lately? Like, what what is Dell selling? Are they selling, like, servers? They're, sh they're certainly not selling 
a lot of computers these days. I hardly see ever ever see like Dell laptops. Alienware, I guess, is a Dell product, but maybe I'm just not the market for that. So I, I mean, I'm not saying the guy doesn't have money. He definitely has money, and you want to see a guy with that much capital park park a percentage point or five percentage points or whatever. Um, but ultimately, like you, I'm like, nah, whatever. If if someone copies Sailor's playbook and then starts tweeting AI pictures of Bitcoin like Sailor does, but it's not Sailor, I'll be pissed. There's already too much, too many AI photos on my timeline of like Bitcoin and stuff like that. I just, I can't do another, I can't do another Michael AI tweeting on my timeline about Bitcoin. I just can't have it. I can't have it. Is there a lot of cock sucking going on with, right? You know what I mean? Like, if you're not, there's a lot going on. And people are fucking simping. There's a lot a of hot tua going on out there for, uh, there's so much the Bitcoin my, treasury. It's, it's, I'll say it. People are fucking sucking their cocks flat out. <laughs> and it, you know what? They could do what they want, but come on. Does it really matter yeah. who the fuck buys into this? But whatever. At the very least, I'm looking at this as an opportunity. If they buy these people with uh, with wealth, if they start buying a lot Bitcoin, a lot of it, then it's definitely going to be even more scarce for us to buy. And the price has to go up too. But like yeah, boom dust. Don't be a fucking cuck. I totally don't agree, be a you know? cuck. Yeah. Why? Like who is gives Del a shit? The number tw- Del- Dell's the twelfth richest guy in the world. That's pretty high. It, I, I, it is high. He sold Elon a lot of Musk computers, bought guess, Bitcoin. Right? Yeah. He still has it, right? And he's yeah. I don't know what he is now. Probably number fifty five now. I don't know. He's lost I don't. I don't really. To me, like this this kind of stuff is like played out at this point. The CEO buying Bitcoin, the rich guy buying Bitcoin. I don't care. I want. I want like. Dr. Phil to come out and buy Bitcoin. Base Dr. Phil to come out and buy Bitcoin. Have you heard him it. speak, by the way? Like a, I've, in the last little while. He was on Rogan a little while ago. It was a good episode. He, he's, he's got really a, good. He shares a lot of the same concerns that I have. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's really good. Yeah. But let's talk about uh lightning node runners, specifically L and D sure. node runners. And they need to take action if you're running 0. 0.17.0. So if that number, if that's the version you're running, or earlier, 0.17.0, take note, because you should consider upgrading. I'm not sure how many people listening to this show are running a Lightning node, but if you are, as I say, take note. The discovery, they say, is um, it's a vulnerability to a DOS attack. And this is where they send malicious onion packets that cause the node to instantly run out of memory and then crash. So... Upgrade to a version, LND version 0.17.1 or newer. So what I have to say, though, is 0.17.0 came out many, many months ago, November 2023. Mm -hmm. And actually, that was 0.17.1 came out November 2023. So that's been out for some time. So they patched this seven months ago. But we finally just knew or just know about it right now. They, somebody has been sitting on this information and not telling anybody that they should be upgrading. And I'm wondering, people out there, look, not many people really rely on Lightning. But I would imagine there's a very small percentage of people that do. And if for whatever reason they were shut out from getting access to their funds because this bug was in the system and they weren't advised to update their yes, software yes, that's sir. fucking bullshit because you never know what type of harm this may have impacted on somebody if they needed to buy food or medicine for themselves or their family and they try to use it oh their node crashed because it ran out of memory and because why they weren't advised to upgrade that's fucking bullshit they should it should be on their shoulders it should the onus is on them the people that, that fucking do this to program it and know about the bugs to release the information beforehand let people know Tell people to upgrade, and if they don't, fuck them. But at <laughs> least, at least they know. I'm going to leave it at that. It's fucking trash, though. I don't have anything really to say because I don't run a lightning node, but I'd be curious to hear your opinion on one other thing. What is the right amount of time? Is it zero days? Is it, you know, a week? Where, where, how, how quickly do you expect these things to be disclosed? I would say right away, as soon as it's known, you don't have to say exactly what is the problem. Just mm-hmm. say a vulnerability is known it's advised you upgrade right away as soon as the thing comes out if you patched it in one of the later versions that bug is known because the patch doesn't come by itself Mm -hmm. somebody 
programmed it to get around to fix that problem. And at that point, you say, look, the vulnerability existed. We don't have to say the specifics, but it's highly advisable you upgrade right away to the newest version. If you don't, it's, you know, all the more power to you. But if you do, then you're protected. And the, the fact they didn't do anything, they sat on this for seven months, it just rubs me the wrong way. If you want, we want Lightning to be an alternative for people to use for everyday payments. We we got to do better. Yeah, and we're not. I agree with you there. Yeah, I agree with you there. I think a lot of people are going to be looking at this and saying, you know, how can I trust my my like you said there day to day? Think about like Bitcoin Jungle or Bitcoin Beach, where like you really do need these things to just work. And if your node is not working, well, you got a problem. You know, like that's a big deal, and it's too bad that this happened, but. I don't know. There's, I, I'm, I'm starting to think, Len, that there's, uh, you know, there's a sort of reckoning. Maybe reckoning is the wrong word, but a, like a rather large, um, you know, conflict issue coming in the developer space. Uh, Lightning Core, whatever. Right. A lot of these guys who basically never went on any podcasts, starting to see them more and more. Guys like Mechanic, for example. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, what he says, I agree with, he just did said's podcast, uh, the other day I listened, listened to it this morning. It was pretty good. These guys don't want to be doing this, but I think they're starting to feel like they have to. And, uh, I think that, you know, the concern that, that they have about the quality of work getting done on Bitcoin now, I think it's a real issue that we should all be paying attention to. This is another good example, kind of a side effect, but, uh, yeah, something that, is going to affect you one way or another. What you don't want is for your developers to become apathetic and for BlackRock to take over, you know, deving corn. You can't have that. But, um, you know, every day you lose a dev or you have a, have a dev that gets more and more detached from the job or from the project. It's not a good day for Bitcoin. Let's wrap this Bitcoin episode up. Hockey starts in a few minutes. We'll just cut this one a little bit shorter altogether, even with the Notable side, notable sure. Loop side. Sure. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good time to end this one. Thanks for okay. listening. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to add another story. <laughs> no, I, I just want to say one thing. Uh, Bugos yeah. was saying this. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Think of all the people here that are listening and watching us rather than watching the pregame. There's, um, I can see on our screen. So I can see, I'll tell you guys how many people. Most weeks by this time, there's close to 200 people uh, across spaces, YouTube. Today, there's only 110. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's, well, it's a beautiful it's day, a, too. It's about to drop to 16 or 17 when the game starts. So, so I, it's we, not just that. It's, it's <laughs> We have the price of Bitcoin went down. There's a lot going on. Yeah. So, yeah. whatever. Maybe, Listen, maybe, we love you guys all the same. You're right. Boom does. Shout out to you guys. Uh, yeah, okay. No, notables coming up. Stay here or don't. You guys know, know the drill. All right. Don't be a cock. Are you a fan of the old school NHL 94 game on the Genesis or SNES? Why not check out my show, the NHL 94 podcast, from tournaments and tactics to the people who make up this community. Check it out wherever you listen to podcasts or find it on YouTube.